Hi guys, um, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Anna, I work here. Um, trying to work this. <laughs> Nothing's working. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm kind of, does everyone know what Headspace is? And does anyone use Headspace? Okay, that's a good sign. <laughs> okay, um, so just to give you a bit of a background, um, so Headspace was formed uh, in about 2010 by uh, Andy Puddicum, who is the uh, lovely voice of Headspace. And uh, he actually um, practiced as a monk for 10 years. Um, he met Rich Pearson, who is the other co-founder, whose background uh, is in advertising, and uh, they basically did a skill swap. I think Rich was basically burnt out from the advertising world in London and uh, decided he wanted to learn meditation and was thus introduced to Andy. And Andy wanted to uh, basically all of his learnings and teachings that he got from his time as a, as a monk, he wanted to somehow make it accessible to people. And so, uh, yeah, between those two, uh, they basically formed Headspace. Um, so yeah, I joined them back in like five years ago, I think, uh, back in London. I think I was the fifth employee. I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> not just a meditation app. We're a content company. We cover everything from birth to death. <laughs> and we talk to all ages. So we, you know, it, we need to uh, approach it in an empathetic manner. Um, so really, um, the, you know, the backbone uh, boils down to this. Our vision is to improve the health and happiness of the world, which is, yeah, a big challenge. <laughs> um, and especially needed considering the events of a week or two ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, and how do we do this? Um, it, we basically want to create the world's most comprehensive guide to health and happiness delivered through um, authentic and engaging tools such as our app. You know, it's one of the challenges is to like, how, how, how do we create something that, you know, is a personal experience and, you know, is positive and, um, and you learn something because meditation is really quite a hard thing to teach. So, um, yeah, so there's, you know, there's a, a bunch of like fundamentals that form the backbone of our creative decisions at Headspace. So I'm just going to talk about a few of them. Uh, first thing is color. Um, yeah, so I'll start with our logo. It's orange. Um, I mean, just orange in itself is a very like warm, um, like energetic color, and it you know it feels right for Headspace. Um, it's playful, it's engaging, um, it's warm, it has, you know, it's energetic, like I mentioned before, it's, you know, tradition, it's knowledge, um, and according to Frank, it's happy, <laughs> apparently. Um, so, yeah, um, and also, obviously, we don't just use orange, but like our color palette is intrinsic to our brand. We use warm hues, and you can see that, like, it's applied to our illustration and it really, yeah, it just, it feels approachable and um, it just works really well for us. Um, shape, uh, so shape is another important um, element. Um, again, if I go back to the logo, um, I don't know if you can see the difference. <laughs> Hopefully you can, it's massive. Uh, oh, hello. So yeah, our orange dot is actually an irregular circle. Um, um, so yeah, like the irregular shape of the dot, I think is a good metaphor for the mind and like the irregularity of human existence. Um, you know, 
I mean, it's, it's, it can mean so many things. And I think the dot has a lot of weight for our brand. It's, you know, wh like what is behind the dot? It's like a window into the mind. And I think at Headspace, we really like to sort of hone in on the weirdness <laughs> that goes on, you know, in our minds and like, let's talk about it. You know, sometimes we don't like what we see and like, sometimes we have a hard time dealing with it and, um, you know, it's I, maybe this is a good kind of representation of that. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty random. Um, and again, so shape um, is really important. Characters, um, our illustrations we use like, soft lines and kind of graphic shapes. I didn't realize there was sound in that. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, which this kind of like leads on to character. Um, so if you know the Headspace brand, um, we, we use a lot of character, you know, it, they um, exist in our animations and, you know, it's it's very hard not to like an animation, um, you know, especially when you're talking about difficult subjects and subjects that are like really hard to explain. And I think like a character can be seen as like a Trojan horse to sort of like teach people something. So um, I think, well, I'm gonna show you one of our animations, uh, which is probably the best example. Training the mind is often quite different to how people imagine it to be. Maybe they have an idea it's about stopping thoughts or eliminating feelings. But the reality is a bit different. Oh. An easy way to think of it is to imagine yourself sitting by the side of a busy road. The passing cars representing the thoughts and the feelings. Now all you have to do is to sit there and watch the cars. Sounds easy, right? Uh -huh. But what usually happens is that we feel a bit unsettled by the movement of the traffic. So we run out into the road and try to stop the cars. Or maybe even chase after a few forgetting that the idea was to just sit there. And of course, all this running around only adds to the feeling of restlessness in the mind. So training the mind is about changing our relationship with the passing thoughts and feelings, learning to view them with a little more perspective. And when we do this, we naturally find a place of calm. Will we sometimes forget the idea of the exercise and become distracted? Of course we will. But as soon as we remember, there we are, back on the side of the road again, just watching the traffic go by, perfectly at ease in both body and mind. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, another thing to talk about is uh, environment. And just to sort of like maybe recap on character, um, you know, like one of the things that we don't want to fall down is getting into that kind of like Mr. Men approach. You know, what we don't want is like a Mr. Angry or, a, you know, Mrs. Menopause or something. Um, and uh, uh, we do talk about that as well, by the way. So it's random. Um, anyway, so environment, I think, can be used um, to sort of like personify emotion. Um, and, you know, we don't get so locked down like onto a character and, you know, hopefully um, we don't judge ourselves because some of it, a character's being represented by an emotion, if that makes any sense. Um, so, yeah, um, just wanted to briefly talk about photography as well. We've um, recently, um, in the last year, been using photography as like an extension of, of our illustration just to sort of like open up the channels and make the brand as diverse as possible. And like, you know, how do we, how do we create a style that kind of reflects that humor and tone that our illustrations do? So, um, yeah, as an example of that. Um, yeah, so, God, this talk feels phenomenally shorter than the other ones. 
um, which is a good thing because it's a Friday night and everyone probably wants to go to the pub. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, by like taking into account all of like the approaches around shape, character, color, you know, it hopefully, um, you know, we end up with a product that, uh, you know, um, teaches people meditation in the, the most kind of like friendly, warm, empathetic manner. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>